Sama natin sa linya ng telepo ng veteran boxing analyst na si Ronnie Nathaniels. Ronnie, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good evening, TJ. Uh, Suarez has a tough fight. Okay, gano'ng kahirap yung kalaban niya? Alam natin na isang... Ay, kasi yung kalaban niya, European lightweight champion. Yun na nga, eh, Euro champion, di ba? Uh, he's 24 years old. Mm -hmm. Problem is, he's 5'10 in height. Aha. So, okay. he has uh, maybe a 3-inch uh, height advantage over okay. Charlie Suarez. Okay. Now, uh, Ed Pixon told me earlier that uh, Suarez is tough and he's also well prepared and trained. Mm -hmm. And with prayers and a little luck, I think he'll be fine. I think so too, because uh, while Cordina is taller and he was also a bronze medalist in the Commonwealth Games, right. uh, all I, I guess uh, the coaches know what needs to be done. I think. You get under the jab of Cordina, work to the body, and Suarez hits pretty hard. And he works. He's got hand speed. He's got good body shots. So he may be able to wear down Cordina. Uh, hopefully, uh, he'll be able to get the job done because if he beats Cordina, he'll be well on the way. Well, uh, we know Olympic boxing is very, very different from uh, professional boxing. To begin with, in the preparation standpoint, in the pros, you know who Tama. you're fighting against. You have Tama. two months to prepare, to analyze, to scout. Tama. These guys have to have an all-around preparation, whether it's a tall guy, a small guy, a strong guy, or a, a runner. Um, pero it's kind of rare that they will meet somebody that much taller than them. Now, normally, since you're in yeah. the same weight class and the weight difference in Olympic boxing is very minimal compared to the pros in terms of the weight classes, how, how prepared do you think our boxers will be against a much taller fighter? I think uh, Suarez has always liked fighting taller fighters. Okay. He's like Manny Pacquiao in that sense. Gusto ni Manny, yung mas matangkad yung kalaban niya. Mm -hmm. He likes that. And I think Suarez feels the same way. He likes that, uh, that kind of opponent. So I, I, I don't doubt at all that he's in, uh, he's in great condition. Okay. Uh, Dodong Donaire, who trained him in Las Vegas right. at the top rank gym, told me, you know, he expects Charlie Suarez to win a medal. Mm -hmm. And he says he's, he's in really great shape. And you know, Charlie is a veteran. He knows what this is all about. Right. And I guess if he really gets going, uh, Cordina, the Welshman, will be in trouble. Well, Cordina is, as well, you know, I read something in BBC how this kid's hungry. He said he's yeah. been preparing for this moment for the last eight years of his life. I mean, it's rare that you have an athlete that is as you know, goal-oriented and targeted for that long right. of a time. And he's got so much pride in himself as well. When you talk about hunger, Charlie's been there. He's been, you know, one of our, our gold medal potentials for many years, uh, many uh, chances. How hungry do you think uh, these two boxers are and how different will that matter when it comes to a shorter, amateur-style uh, fight? Palagayko, Charlie knows that this probably is his last chance. Mm -hmm at an Olympic medal. Right. And I think that is going to be his motivation. Okay. They have trained hard, they have trained well. The only problem is he's got only one guy in his corner, and that's uh, uh, Velasco, right. trainer Velasco. Mm -hmm. But of course, two Australians have uh, offered to assist Velasco in Correct. the corner mm -hmm. because he can't do everything. So that was the advantage of inviting the Australians to train with our fighters in Baguio and being nice to them, right. they are reciprocating the gesture, which is a major plus. Yeah, that's big. Yep. I agree. Well, let's shift over our attention to Roger Ladon, who drew a first round by. Um, yeah. He's uh, a name, of course, that's not very familiar to the Filipinos yet. We've, we've, we've known and seen Charlie in the past. But how good is this kid, uh, Roger Ladon? And, and uh, from what this Ed has told you, what kind of potential can we expect from him? I think this kid is good. I think he's really good. Uh, he's, uh, he's got quick hands, he's an intelligent fighter, and, uh, you know, he was looking very sharp and in competitive form uh, when Ed Pixon watched them train. Mm -hmm. And so did uh, Joey Romosanta told me that he had breakfast with the fighters and their spirits were up and they feel, they feel good about it. Incidentally, Laddon is seated number five in his uh, light flyweight division That's great. Mm -hmm. and he will meet the winner uh, between Patrick Lorenco of Brazil, mm -hmm. 23 years old, uh, who was in the quarterfinals of the 2013 World Championships and European Herne Martinez, a 24-year-old Colombian. So okay. these are young guys but Laton is also a very young fighter. 
and I think he's got enough talent to get by his next opponent. Are there any concerns? Do you have any concern that, for example, that Lareco guy, the Brazilian, is the one that makes it through? Will there be concern that uh, Ladon will be fighting against a hometown boy? Well, that's a possibility. Now, I read a very interesting story in The Guardian today. Mm -hmm. And it revealed that senior figures within amateur boxing have warned many, have warned that many bouts, including those to decide medals, could be fixed at the Olympic Games in Rio. Okay. Amid widespread concern about corruption and financial malpractices at the sport's global governing body. Very, very interesting story. Now, it also says, mm -hmm. horrified senior officials within the sport believe a cabal of officials are able to use their power to manipulate the draw and the judging system to ensure certain boxers will win. Well, talk about that a bit, Ronnie. There's some new rules that will be implemented in this Olympics for the first time. Uh, what's new that we can expect compared to what we've seen in past Olympics and past amateur boxing competitions? Well, they're, they're scoring like the pros. Right. It's a 10-point must scoring system. Mm -hmm. The scores of the, the uh, of three of the five judges, uh, which will be drawn uh, through a computer, will okay. be the ones that will decide the winner. Mm -hmm. It's not that push button system that they had before, which right. was a disaster. But when you make contact, you push a button, and yeah, out of the yeah. five got judges. Uh, but you know, if, hit, you're, yeah. if you're 65 years old mm -hmm. and you're a little slow with your with Fingers. your reflexes, yep. you're gonna you have a problem. Okay? Right, right, right. Now this is. Uh, Dr. Wu's idea of trying to make amateur boxing very much like the pro ranks. No mm -hmm. headgear. No, no headgear, yes. So, so you can see the boxer's face because in the past, fight fans used to get upset that they couldn't see the boxer's face. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it was covered with this headgear and the headgear was not, not a defensive mechanism. You could get cut easier Correct. with yeah. the headgear. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's a good innovation uh, for sure. Okay. But, well, the only, my only concern is that about the, you know, uh, corruption, if there is indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Dr. Wu has flatly denied it. Yep. But, you know, the British newspapers don't, only, don't really come out with stories like this unless they had some kind of evidence. Correct, correct. Absolutely. So, yeah. in that case, you know, normally you'd hope that your boxer just knocks the guy out. So, yeah. the scoring uh -huh. will not uh -huh. be an yeah. issue. So, right. we'll see. We'll see how, how strong, how powerful our guys are. Now, before I let you go, Ronnie, just a bit on the announcement uh, from the camp of Manny Pacquiao. They said... They're set with Jesse Vargas as uh, Manny's next opponent. He's 27-1. and one. He's a WBO champion. Uh, Ten knockouts. Obviously not as big a name and not as strong as, as a Terrence Crawford. But what are your thoughts about Manny facing Vargas? Well, I be, I'll be honest with you. I never wanted Manny Pacquiao to fight again. Again, we know that. Yep. Uh, time and I again, mean, we've heard you say that, right? Yeah, I, I, I've said that time and again. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesse Vargas is certainly an easier fight than Terence Crawford. Uh -huh. If he fought Terence Crawford, he would be in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. He would have to retire again. <laughs> you think he would lose to Crawford right yeah, off the bat? He would. Crawford is too young, too uh -huh. fast, uh, hits too hard, moves too well, and he's in the peak of his career. He's one of the best fighters right. in the United States today. Right. Jesse Vargas is, is not such a problem for Manny Pacquiao. Okay. Uh, but of course, there's a little uh, tug of war going on between Bob Arum and uh, Michael Conn. Okay. Bob Arum said, what does Michael Conn know? Who is he to decide who <laughs> Pacquiao is going to fight? Okay. You know, so those two guys are getting at it. Okay, so we'll see. And of course, interesting to note, of course, Terence Crawford just beat Victor Postol, who is also a uh, Freddie Roach boy. And he not only beat him, he mauled him. Exactly, he dominated him. So he that might cause him. some, you know, that will raise flags there that he mauled a Freddie Roach boy. Uh, and right Freddie Roach there. doesn't want him to fight Crawford. All right, right. So, well, in the coming days, we'll see if there's any formal finality uh, with uh, Jesse Vargas being the next opponent of Senator Manny Pacquiao. Ronnie, thank you for joining us. Okay, but Stay let's safe and dry this Friday uh, evening. Uh, to amateur boxers. Yes, all wish the best. them all the best oh. this weekend. Yeah. Salamat, Thanks. salamat. Thanks, salamat Ronnie. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.